Clay Trader, and this will be a video chart on ticker symbol AMD. We'll take a look at the 30 minute time frame. Real quick, what do I mean by 30 minute in case maybe you're new to charts? Instead of each one of these candlesticks here representing one day's worth of price action, which is what you would normally see, each one represents 30 minutes. While this here may look like several days worth of time, it's actually just today's price action broken down into 30 minute time slices. I like to this time frame, I think it does a good job of telling the quote unquote story of the price and then makes mapping out where levels of support and resistance a bit easier to see. I have done this analysis quite a few times in the past. That's where these red and green lines are coming from. And the nice thing about my chart provider e-signal, whenever I put up an annotation, no matter how much later I come back, you know, it remembers where the lines are. Uh, so the last time I did it, uh, 1250 was a level of resistance, but that's where we're gonna start the updates at. Actually, I, I lied. Let's first do a little house cleaning. I'm gonna get rid of these lines here. Yes, they still pertain to the chart. They're just not relevant right now. And from a presentation standpoint, I don't wanna have a million lines everywhere that can cause clutter and confusion. So let's try to keep this as clean as possible. So the first update though, is based on a foundational principle in charting, which states when levels of resistance are broken and closed above, you wanna see them act as support. So the last time I did the video, I talked about 1250 as being a level of resistance. And you can see right there, when the price broke above it yesterday, that was kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back and you know, up it went. Sure, it's pulled back here, but uh, with the pullback, you know, the, the bull still plenty of opportunity to build a higher base, and that's the name of the game when it comes to building long-term uptrends. But 1250, newest area of support. Ideally speaking, what would make the chart look the healthiest? If the price can stay up above that purple line there, which is the 50 period something moving average, that would be the best case scenario. But if the price does drop a lot, I'm not sitting here saying that everything is ruined or anything like that. That would just be that, you know, uh, you know, best case scenario and would make the chart look the most powerful going forward. What about levels of resistance? So if the price is gonna continue back upwards, where are some of these hurdles at? Now there's two levels of resistance. The first one is the fun one. And I call it the fun one because I fully realize that yes, it is fun to talk about you know, testing previous highs, breaking new highs, and that's where 1425 comes into play. But in many cases, as is the case here, there's usually an other bridges that first need to be crossed before you start talking about that fun level of resistance. And in this case, in my mind, $13.70 is gonna be that initial bridge that needs to be crossed. So yes, no doubt about it, 1425 is a level of resistance, but before you start talking about that one up there, the first bridge that needs to be crossed is $13.70. So all in all, at the end of the day though, as long as the price just keeps on putting in these higher overall lows like it's been doing, the chart's gonna to continue to take care of itself. One of the most popular questions I get is, hey Clay, how do you find the stocks that you trade? So what I've done is put together this free resource guide where I talk about the tools that I use to locate stocks that I find interesting and think may have potential. So if that sounds like something that could add value to you as a trader, then by all means, click right there to get access to the guide. The guide itself is very short and to the point. And like I say, it is free. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.